let's talk about Wing Chun. I would like to know your opinion about this style and everything around it. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, like I told you amongst ourselves, I'm not such a big fan of Chinese styles. I like Japanese styles and some Korean styles. They're more harder styles, more practical in my point of view. I think a lot of Chinese styles nowadays, they're not very practical or have a lot of like these esoteric movements like Whoa! like this, yes. which are a little bit weird and I don't know, it's not for me. I like to more direct system like karate or like one that kind of stuff. I don't like the very esoteric or like uh, mystical kind of thing. I do like, for example, for health, um, yes. a lot of Chinese styles have a lot of like breathing work and that stuff, which actually has a, a strong effect in your health. And I like that. But specifically for combat, I prefer Japanese styles. And Wing Chun, uh, the first time I saw it, I, th I thought it looked looked cool. It looks interesting. But yeah. it now that I have more experience and I'm older, um, I think it's not very practical. It's very... It doesn't work for modern fighting. Maybe at the time that it was made, it worked, but not, this is what I think, okay? Mm. For what it is now, it, it's not practical. But that's my, like, just abbreviated opinion. I will tell you more as, as we talk if you want to, but. Yeah. So, for the beginning, I would like to say that I don't really like to, when people call Wing Chun as a martial art, I, I prefer saying like this is like a, a fight system and mm -hmm. Wing Chun was designed to be practical but it's not practical anymore for our time I think. Mm -hmm. And I think I think what you mean is that in most martial arts there's much wider margin to express yourself and it's more yeah, flexible. Yeah, yeah. But Wing Chun is maybe more structured in a way that it doesn't allow you to change anything or Yes, yes. They is that what you mean? That's yeah, what I, it seems to me. Like yeah. everyone has to do it exactly the same way. Yeah, kind of like this. Mm -hmm. And I also, I was spoke before, start slowly thinking that the the line that this is a martial arts or fighting style mm -hmm. or something slowly become disappearing, and mm -hmm. Wing Chun become a re religion. Like people believe that. This style is the best in the world, and every new Ip Man movie, mm -hmm. this style getting more and more followers, and mm -hmm. everyone, maybe not everyone, but big percent of these people are going to they think that they become a new Donya Yen from <laughs> from Ip Man, and they are in the end probably they are not even close to this level, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they yeah, actually think that they are going to be like this. Actually, it's the, the Yip Man movies are what's really promoting Wing Chun now. It wasn't so popular before. It's really popular now because of those movies. Yes, uh, actually. Yeah. Yip, uh, the Donnie Yen, he's not just a Wing Chun guy. He's like a martial arts expert. He's, he, he, uh, he's uh, really good in other styles. I don't remember what it is now, Wushu and many other things. That's why he's so acrobatic and agile. Yeah. And that's not pure Wing Chun that he's doing. And another thing that I was going to say that you said about the religion thing, it happens with all styles. Like many yeah. people who are very narrow minded, they always think, oh, my style is the best. It happens with all of them. But yeah, now that Wing Chun is becoming more popular, it's, it's starting to happen. Yeah, but it's also bad about this, that this people believing that they're going to be like Don Yen, that later they going to fight with MMA guys and they get beat up because Actually, they never fought before. They mm -hmm. do just cheese out like a sparring. And, mm -hmm. you know, in the real fight, it's not possible that you're going yeah. to make the sticky hands like mm -hmm. how they train. I know because mm -hmm. I was I was the one who who was this follower of the Ip Man movie. You know, I saw this movie when 2011, first time I saw this movie. And the first thing what I start do, I just search on YouTube. I found Master Wong, <laughs> and I and I trained with him like this. So here, like he just starting his, his channel, and here, like this is Wing Chun for beginner lessons. I trained by myself, and later I found my trainer, and yeah, we I was his kind of first student, and so I will get some profits that I will have more lessons, and yeah, I was like really 
I, I was like, uh, I know, I was really hungry of the knowledge. <laughs> I, all the time writing to him, how is do, how I should do this, do this, and I learned a lot. But in the end, my teacher and me and yeah, we decided to uh, stop be a part of the big organization of Wing Chun because we don't like this uh, uh, line how you train how you train okay. mm -hmm. like an uh, example it's not allowed for you to learn how to use your elbows in first year of your training this is just mm -hmm. just silly you know it's like you train three, three, more, uh, three years and after three years oh after literally lower I have a, my elbow I can use this in the fight <laughs> Wow, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like a, it's just it's just stupid. It's, it's why we yeah. wait for this. We, I think, when you are grown up, and maybe for kids it's fine, but when you are grown up or adult, you go into the join to the club or some gym, and you wanna learn how to fight, and you wanna learn how to protect yourself now, no, not after five years, mm -hmm. because this is your point. You wanna feel safe when you train martial arts or just just yeah believe believe in yourself uh, but when you are adult you want to learn this now not after be ready to protect yourself after five years <laughs> yeah actually all, all the martial arts i've trained in all the teachers will teach you the technique all techniques as as soon as you're able to do it he'll teach it to you like you if you go with my taekwondo teacher uh, as a white belt, if you can do a spinning kick as a white belt, he'll he'll train you to do it. Like the the earlier you start, the better, because then you have yeah. more training. Exactly. And I also, when I was teaching taekwondo, I had white belts doing like spin kicks and really complicated things because they were getting good at it. So I just thought I don't care. Like the belt is okay. You have kata or tul or whatever. Like the forms, yeah, okay, that it goes according to the belt. But all the skills. And the weapons in your body, yeah, just teach it as, as they, you acquire. Yeah. It's not necessary to like block your 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 learning because of some rule. That's yeah, silly. It's, like, it's not allowed to do this move because you're on this level. It's just... Yeah, that's stupid. That's, that's stupid. Yeah. I think from what I've seen that Wing Chun is designed to work in a line, not only attacking, but also like it's made to defend only straight Blows. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it looks like to me so i don't see it working against a boxer or something yeah and they are training actually mostly protect yourself from the center line and in actually in from center line you're using only not maybe not only but mostly in wind chun and we train like wind chun against wind chun but how big possibility is that you're going to found, found somebody on the street who train Wing Chun and start attacking you from the center line. It's more yeah. probably that he's going to do some weird yeah. punches that's more natural. <laughs> the stance in Wing Chun is more frontal, right? Yeah. Like you stand, most most skilled fighters do not stand to, totally frontal. They're more on the side. Yeah. And some styles even like completely to the side. So I, you know, my ideal from karate and kickboxing and even boxing, like I have three quarters. I'm never like this. Mm. Actually, when I fight the guys, if I'm sparring a guy who's standing perfectly frontal, it's easier for me. Yeah. Like it's a really big target. It's really easy to get their body. But when I'm fighting some guy who's more on the side, it's much harder for me. So mm. I don't know. When I see the Wing Chun guys go straight forward like this, like, 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 it's just, I don't know. I just, I don't think that's a very smart or effective. Like I know also, there's a lot of Wing Chun, a lot of Wing Chun people are going to be angry at me, but I'm just giving you what I think. Like is my honest opinion. Yeah, I also, uh, you know, I trained Wing Chun like mm -hmm. almost four years, and and I also just find out that it doesn't work that well, <laughs> and uh, I try to change it, and even uh, because also I think that is too complicated. The, the people say that is the complete system, like uh, the best one, but it's too complicated. I think they tried, this is too many, it's too many techniques, like blocking techniques mm. and stuff like this. And sometimes when I see these videos, when they're fighting like against some and other styles and they get really easy beat up from them. And I feel like maybe because they think like they have like a hundred different blocks mm. and they see that when they see punch and like they think which block I should use, boom, it's too late now. <laughs> Actually, think, 
<laughs> is it supposed to be a complete system? Does it have, I, this is a good opportunity for me to learn about it. I'll ask you some questions. Does it have like um, low kick blocks and elbow blocks, like defense against low kicks and elbows? Does it have that? Um, yeah, I think so. And against uppercuts, for example, does it have yes. movements? For it? Yes, we have a, we have a, like, but for because uppercuts, it's more normally like when you have a guard, you just go down, like you make kind of like a axe chop, mm. <laughs> something like this. So you, you, you're hitting the, yeah, mm -hmm. it's quite painful when you hit here or when you hit just mm -hmm. this part. When somebody yeah. go down, you just cut yeah, in. In Kyokushin, in Kyokushin, we block the uppercuts with the knife hand. Yeah. We block them with the at least this is how I did it. The, and the, what about the low kick blocks? It's not like a Muay Thai block, right? It's like like with the stomp. No, we, we try to make like a stop kick like this. Mm -hmm. like a yeah, stop that's big, not, big actually, big that's, big that's not a good idea. Uh, you, no. you can break your foot. Yeah. I, but also, I, I don't, I haven't tried, trained that much about the legs, actually. I mean, we have a kicks, mm -hmm. but I also yeah. I train, I train also a little bit different version of the, uh, I think like the traditional Wing Chun or traditional Chinese arts, not what people see in movies, but the real thing. There's a rule that you're not supposed to kick above the waist, right? Because of the balance. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I read a long time ago when I was reading about Chinese styles. So it's, Wushu is more an acrobatic thing. It's not yeah. traditional. Actually, in Wing Chun, also I trained this a bit different, more modern version. Because mm -hmm. in the traditional one, you stand like 70 to 30 percent of your legs, so you stay on your back leg, so the first leg can work, so you can stop somebody or kick somebody before. But in the end, when you're standing on the back leg, somebody push you, you just go. <laughs> I, I was I was trained like a 50/50. You stand like 50/50 on your on your feet. It's also yeah, was. And I also have tried to train with somebody who trained traditional style. And even maybe he have some, some things what was surprising me, but he was much slower with his movement with walking because he was like this, you know, 70, 30. And yeah, I was, I was faster with movement around. <laughs> when I watched the videos of Wing Chun guys like fighting in MMA or something, you know, on YouTube, yeah. it almost looks like they're not really doing Wing Chun. It's very sloppy. Like yeah. they can't really use the techniques properly. And I, and the few that I've seen that like are more aggressive, they're, they just fight in one line. Yeah. Going like this back and forth. It doesn't work very well against a, a guy who's trained in something else like boxing or kickboxing. Yeah, actually they always try to protect the side like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Wing Chun is designed to fight in the small rooms, small areas, but I, I can bet that if you looked Wing Chun guy who trained five years or more years against some MMA guy who trained one year in the elevator, I think MMA guy is going to quit this really fast. <laughs> Even the Wing Chun is uh, designed fighting in the small areas. <laughs> and yeah. So you're saying the MMA guy has an advantage. Yeah, like yeah, he... yeah. It's like a, he would win. Yeah. Doesn't matter yeah. mm -hmm. because he's more like he have a bigger fan of the techniques, what he can use. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. bigger, bigger arsenal, more, yeah. more weapons, yeah. And, it, and it, more experience with fighting because mm -hmm. actually a lot of traditional martial artists that they train just drills or some yeah. movements, no, but, but not, not fighting much. <laughs> yeah. Even the ones that do train a lot of sparring, uh, many times they only train with people from their own style or just yeah. their own school. So they all fight identical or very similar. So yeah. when you put someone else in front who does something different, it's like very difficult to adapt. That's one thing about MMA. Everyone is like very free. Yeah. So they have an advantage in that sense. But yeah, I notice it, especially with Wing Chun, that they're all like robots doing exactly the same thing. Yeah. So yeah, you put someone who doesn't do Wing Chun, then it is, there's no reaction. Yeah, exactly. But it happens like it, it's not just with me. Many people, Sergio, you know, from Practical Combat, mm -hmm. tells me this. He told me many times, which is, happens to me also. When you fight someone from Muay Thai, for example, the Muay Thai guys only use a certain amount of techniques. They don't use very many techniques. Mm -hmm. 
someone from karate or kung fu or or taekwondo fights against a muay thai guy he starts throwing different kicks and different things many times a muay thai guy will get kicked in the face or because he's not used to it it's not because yeah. he's not good he's not used to it so they don't know how to read the movements yeah exactly and by the way, I do like Muay Thai, I'm just saying, you know, when you're used to cert doing a certain like um, recipe or like, like specific meth method, you know, you never try different things. And when something different comes, you're going to be confused or it's going to be hard to adapt to it. So I see that with Wing Chun. It's very like, very square. It's always like very strict about what they're doing. Mm. It needs more freedom of techniques, like you're saying. Yeah, I'm okay. Also about that this too complicated style, and thinking like yeah, this these people who fight with another fighters like from MMA or something, and this Wing Chun guys example they fight with them, and they have probably plan for this fight, and million techniques in the, in his head, but he just get one hit in his nose, and this all techniques disappear it's like a blank. <laughs> it's like, and later it's just like like you know hiding and mm -hmm. trying to survive. Like, yes, I've seen I've seen that a lot. Yeah, not yeah, just with Wing Chun. Yeah, yeah, but 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 it's, it's really often when you see these videos on on YouTube that Wing Chun guys who are fighting, they got this yeah. one punch in the nose and all these techniques on this years of training disappear. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, because yes. when they do just chi sao or it's like mm -hmm. training like drills, when the punch is like a, I don't know, ten centimeters or fifteen centimeters from you and never touch you, so how they can. Yeah. know how to fight or how to yeah that's why i always say you need sparring and sparring needs to have contact i'm not saying like go crazy and beat go to knock the other guy but you need to get contact yeah. so you understand distance and how it feels to get hit and many things sparring without actual contact is useless also yeah. point sparring is also useless it's good as an exercise sometimes to get timing but mm. if all you do is point sparring when you have a real fight it's not it's gonna like gonna be really bad for you because you need to understand that a fight continues so it's a continuous thing yeah yeah, yeah. The, the thing is you told me that there's there's many different types of blocks and stuff honestly when i see wing chun i think okay it just has like three or four movements <laughs> it all like very i don't know there's many 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 things it's many so, many it's too many too yeah. many techniques and i on my on my youtube channel i do this wing chun for beginners things Mm -hmm. And I decided to lock all my this this lessons in ten ten videos. You know, this is my plan. Like it's just maximum four blocks because this is what you normally going to use. Why you need to know forty blocks when you can use only three or yeah. four? And actually, this is what you normally using. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, actually, fighting should be simple. Yeah, you shouldn't be thinking too much. Like if you learn many things, it should be natural. You don't have to think. If I'm like thinking too much, the time I'm spending thinking, the other guy is punching me. So, <laughs> the further the better. My taekwondo teacher, he told me about uh, what we have to know about techniques with your arms. You need just two techniques, one and two. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need more. <laughs> like he's like, or oh, later, like, if you wanna be more advanced, you can do one, two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just mix with this. <laughs> that's why also uh, you we train combinations. The idea of the combination of doing it again and again is that if you fight, you do it without thinking. Yeah. This is the same like when you do kata or whatever. The idea is that you teach your subconscious, uh, your body and your mind to just do an action automatically. If yeah. you have to think, then forget it. It's usually not. It's not going to be good to have to process too much information when mm. you're fighting you only have like a split of a second to do anything yeah but now i'm learning something i thought wing chun was just two movements or something <laughs> i don't know because oh. when i look at it it's just a guy going forward and doing this or he yeah. saw but he saw it just look i don't know it looks very i don't know it doesn't seem like there's much to it it's, um, it's too too much to, techniques to the, to the does Wing Chun focus on attacking the body or the head or because sometimes it just looks like they're going always to the body. I think they go into the body only because they most of the clubs or schools they have a, like mm -hmm. a kind of like a small uh, 
but like chest protection and mm-hmm. they have just this this body uh, mem- memory that they go into is mm-hmm. attack only the solar places because they have a mm-hmm. these things i think because normally you should attack your like the yeah. center line is your 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 target like face nose uh, these things throat uh, solar place and go just to the balls this is I, I, your, I have... your <laughs> I have two things that I think about this when I see this. Attacking this upper area of the body is kind of pointless. Even the solar plexus, it's pointless. Yeah. If you go to the body, go to the you know the flo- floating ribs, mm. the liver, on or the spleen. Yeah. But just the center line itself, actually, I think it's kind of pointless. Even the abs, if the guy's training, you can punch me really hard on the abs. It's not going to hurt. Yeah. Like I'm used to getting hit, even though I'm a small guy. But you need to get there areas where there is no muscle protecting like on the sides of the ribs and that's not the center line you need to move to in diagonals the only the only point here in the center line is right at the beneath the solar plexus mm. we call it a uh, mouth of the stomach in spanish i don't know if there's a name in english but right where the ribs end you can knock the guy's wind out to there but that's the only point in this line mm. and then of course the throat and that but it's not easy also, there's another thing. It's not effective, very effective for attacking to go th- like train like that. Yeah. But then for defending, the average person is going to try to punch you in the face. And they're going to try to swing like that also. Unless yeah. you are fighting someone trained, he'll be more uh, neat. Close. He'll be more yeah. organized. But usually it's like guys throwing punches like that, haymakers yeah. or hooks. So and people go to the face mostly. So I think, yeah, it's a very impractical or unrealistic maybe it's just maybe this system was good but in the time they start training this wrong (laughs) yeah i tried to imagine how how were they actually fighting back then maybe they they didn't they didn't make any like wide movements like in boxing or but when you when you see all these kung fu styles they normally you do some wide movements so this is maybe maybe this was maybe this was the strength is the strength in wing chun that you Instead going like this, you just go directly ah, okay, <laughs> to the okay, point. Yeah. Maybe, maybe right. this was the the like you you become like yeah. a tank, just go forward and don't care what's happening around. <laughs> maybe I don't know. Mm-hmm. Also, it's supposed to have been created by a woman, supposedly. Yeah. So it's not not to fo- to f- it's not supposed to be focused on force or strength. It's more like technique, but. It just, I don't know, I just can't imagine how it worked. Maybe against, okay, let's say a Wing Chun guy in the street fights some like normal guy who never learned anything. Yeah. I guess probably he would win, but with someone who knows some boxing or something, I don't, I don't think so. It's, Actually, it's, I also don't really like the, how practitioners of Wing Chun looks. They are yeah. super skinny or super fat. <laughs> It's really not so much athletics ones, like uh, good looking, like healthy and s- like strong Wing Chun guys. Normally they are really skinny or, or fat around the ones. So I normally don't... the training, maybe the training doesn't involve like body conditioning or strengthening, you know? Actually, when I, when I train on the beginning in my, in my club, we, you know, most of the time we just standing and do techniques in the air. <laughs> So okay. we just stand, so yeah. not so much. And actually, yeah. we do a lot of trains for forearms, like example, hold something heavy, mm-hmm. just twist or do something. That's me. We train mostly that we are close here and do we are strong. When yeah, it was difficult to open us, <laughs> but we were strong here. It mm-hmm. was the, mostly, I think, the biggest point of the training from the beginning. But later, when we go out from these traditional organizations and we mm-hmm. try and do our modern style of Wing Chun was better because we was more open and also we try to connect Wing Chun techniques in the gr- fighting on the ground and stuff like this. So mm-hmm. was more interesting than traditional way. Probably also now Wing Chun guys will hate this. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, just from my observations, it doesn't seem practical at all. And uh, well, yeah. Ip, Ip, uh, Donnie Yen is popularizing it again, but it's the same with Aikido and Steven Seagal. When I f- first saw Steven Seagal movies, I thought Aikido was amazing, but it's not <laughs> not really like that. Actually, this could be, could be another topic now, like movies with martial arts, like how they can 
they can make you fish, think. fishing so. like uh, people like we are super yeah. nice and come and train this style because this is yeah we can cool. talk about that too but yeah. oh yeah if before this i just want to continue with something mm -hmm. you know like uh, okay it seems to me that okay maybe sometime at some point in history wing chun worked i don't know but maybe it worked for whatever reason but it never evolved it never changed yeah. But if you see karate or taekwondo or any of these like Japanese where you have all these, these are not actually blocks. They teach it as blocks, but they're not really blocks. They're other things. They're, they're like, um, they're locks and throws. All of these movements are not really blocks because it doesn't make any sense if you think about it. A punch is much faster than all of this movement. And yeah. They're actually other things. But uh, you don't see, you never see anyone trying to actually block something like this and like that yeah you never see anyone trying to do that it's blocks is like with your forearm sorry you, you can see much more practical blocks from even traditional karateka or taekwondo but it and there's certain modifications things change with time and in practice but wing chun it seems like nothing changes and they try to do exactly the same uh, exact and, and everything should go forward everything should evolve <laughs> we cannot in the in the one spot in the same yeah yeah <laughs> with everything but the all like the best martial arts or sports combat the uh, combat sports they're constantly evolving and changing even if it's just little things boxing is not the same now that it was yeah you can the see 40. the difference to, yes, it that changed different. a lot <laughs> not just the physical training but the techniques the footwork everything same with Taekwondo, if you see Taekwondo, the very original, the mm -hmm. first videos in the 50s, and what it is now, it's the technique is way more crisp and developed than what it was before. Mm -hmm. And karate too, like it's much more elegant now. There's a very big development in everything. And there's different things that they that you do now that you didn't do back then. But it doesn't seem the case with Wing Chun. And Actually, I guess Chinese, yeah. Chinese styles in general seem to have this problem. Sorry, sorry. No, that's okay. Because I remember once you said that Karate Gojiru is your like one of your favorite lines, and mm. Gojiru actually have a lucky no one. Yeah, yeah, I think think have no a... one karate is my favorite line because ah. it's a the hardest one. Yeah, but but but, but Gojiru or Okinawa have a. Uh... No, no. If specifically, I like Karate and Kudo. Those are my favorites, mm. but. From the Okinawan ones, Kojuryu, because it seems to be the strongest one. Yeah, but this this style have a influence of the uh, Chinese kung fu, and actually I train Gojuru and sometimes you know for me it looks like a Wing Chun, but just harder version. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I have actually a lot of problems with tran tra transfer my techniques from Wing Chun to to Karate because uh, example. Uh, in, in karate, we go up, no, it was down, we go down always when you mm -hmm. do something. And in, in Wing Chun, you always go up. <laughs> Everything, whatever you do, you go above your arms. It, and it when, actually, and it when I think on, in karate, yeah. when you have to go, for example, here and go down, when I go down, the Wing Chun guys would just press my arms down and, and lock mm -hmm. me. And I always think, like, why I have to go down? It's like, I'm just putting myself to the trap. <laughs> it's like what I, what I thought it was. But it was difficult for me to transfer this Wing Chun thinking to karate and connect these two things. But was well, it, it's two, two things. It's like the, whether the arm goes up or down depends on the type of movement. For example, if it's a low block, it'll come from above. It depends on which side, which side of your forearm you're going to use. Mm -hmm. it's, it goes from underneath when it's going to be the inside of your forearm. It goes from top when it's going to be the outside of your forearm because you want to create rotation. Anyway, that's a detail. But yeah. again, like I said, these movements are not really blocks. They're something else. Yeah, yeah. For example, when, when you see this, mm -hmm. have you ever seen this movement? Or like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's not a block. Or they will tell you it's a block. It's actually like a, an arm bar or leverage. You grab the under the elbow and the arm like this. That's one application. Mm. It's a type of arm bar. Anyway, these are like, they're all hidden locks and throws and other things. Yeah, in the third kata in Goju, you do this kind of move, so it looks like this. Yes. And this is like, a, you grab the, uh, 
leg, the second one, and just make a throw. <laughs> Yeah. Like you, yeah, you yeah, go under, 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 under the leg, and you go under and just leave some guy and throw on the ground. So, yeah, yeah there's many applications. They're not really blocks, so you're never gonna be able to block something like like that. It's yeah. just ridiculous. A punch is ten times faster than the whole movement. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There, there is no crossing of the hands in Wing Chun, right? You don't cross the hands for anything. No, no, no. They also like do like something like like go here and here, so it's like uh, grappling and you twisting or something. So this is also some. Oh, mm -hmm. always like I think in all martial arts, traditional martial arts, when you do something like this, this means something. <laughs> did did yeah. you get anything of that you think is very useful or valuable from Wing Chun? Something that you think, wow, I'm happy I learned this, or in general, you think it's not not very, not very useful. Mm, I. Actually, I use a lot of techniques. What I uh, you can actually see a lot of times in my sparrings <laughs> yeah. that somebody and somebody try to block my arm. I just go like really fast to go because I can. I learn the uh, feel the pressing on on my hands, mm -hmm. so I know how to avoid this. Example: if somebody when I punch it and he block me and he just put me down, I, I just go sleep and, and already hit his nose. Just small punch, but it's sometimes the small punch is like a giving you extra seconds for yeah. another movement, like a distraction. And I learned a, like I using a lot of actually techniques from Wing Chun. Maybe yeah, not, not going saying. forward, but just just mm -hmm. a few blocks. This mm -hmm. what three blo three or four blocks. What I what I learning from Wing Chun, I using a lot. But. Yeah, I, I remember now that you mention it. Some sparring videos with Michael that you. He tries to like go into your arms and he can't because you're you're doing that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it, it, yeah. yeah. Because we we train a lot of these sticky hands, <laughs> but yeah, it's like it's it's nice. Also, actually, I think soon I'm going to post some video with my boyfriend. We make some small sparring without any gloves, without any. You said the boyfriend. <laughs> no, po po Polish friend. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, not boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I hope my girlfriend would not be angry. <laughs> but actually, she is sometimes jealous about him because I like to spend too much time with him and train and do mm -hmm. stupid stuff like climbing. And <laughs> sometimes she feel like she have to compete with him. <laughs> yeah, but doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, we should make some small sparring without gloves. And we do like a, just punching the that kind of a kokushin style that we yeah. can kick and and but just body. And he also could not. In kokushin, by the way, you can punch the arms, you can punch the legs too, and you can also elbow the body. It's just most most people are not aware of it, but you can actually use the elbow against the body in kokushin. Mm. I just thought that they can use knees and, and and yeah. yeah, you can use everything Be beneath the neck. You can do any everything. Oh yeah, it's just protecting the head for obvious reasons but you it's still getting kicked in the head or getting a knee on the you can do you can knee the head you getting a knee on the head is not nice it's just the punches that are okay look our punches and elbows to the head no but you under the neck you can do anything right. Up, your, your polish friend what um i don't there's you know there's a bunch of lines of kyokushin these days mm -hmm. i don't know if in every line you can do the elbow but you can in at least the ones i know you can Anyway, what is your, does your Polish friend practice martial arts? Yeah, That's he that. was in Karate Shotokan. He actually, he is actually, he was, but he don't, he don't like to say that he is. He was mm -hmm. a black belt in Karate Shotokan. There is no was. Yeah, yeah, like, I know, but he just don't feel like he deserves mm -hmm. it to wait. And he normally, when he go for training, he using white belts. So he has have a black belt, but he never using because he still that he always thinks that he's a still student and he should not wear in master master level on on his uh, yeah clothes <laughs> and yeah but we do we did some sparring the this kind of division style but soft one and <laughs> and he was really angry on me that he cannot pass my hands here <laughs> to my body because I do this wind tune stuff. And he was really angry for my sticky hands. <laughs> Have you tried with uh, someone from Kyokushin doing that? No, 
no, no, I didn't try it. But actually, I, I, I was once in two fishing competition. I lose, oh, wow. I lose, but I was close to win. But I, my, I was out of gas, you know. Like I, 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 I could not drift on the end yeah, of this yeah, fight. Yeah. <laughs> the energy is, yeah. It's not just punching. When you're taking so many hits, your body also uses energy to yes, yeah. resist. So yeah, it's very tiring. Yeah, but what, most... what do you have more? What kind of like when you have to fight someone, who gives you the most trouble? Who's most difficult for you? Like I'll give you an example. If I, the type of guys that give me the most trouble are the like like taekwondo guys who are on the side, mm -hmm. just because it's very hard for like the target is is not as yeah, comfortable. Really but when I fight someone who's from uh, karate or kickboxing or something or muay thai, their stance is more frontal, so I find it much easier to go for the body or do whatever I want to do. I don't know what, what if there's like some kind of guy that makes you feel more uncomfortable. I also feel uncomfortable when guys who, have, not because of the reach so much, but guys who have very long arms and they're not very technical. Yeah, when there's, yeah. I have a guy, like I train with a guy like this. His technique is not very good. And then it makes my technique bad because I can't understand what he's doing and it's very hard to go in there. Mm. I don't yeah. know if there's a type For of that. Me also, it's also the tall guys. Because I always also was the smallest one in the in the club, mm -hmm. so everyone is bigger and and taller than me. <laughs> Normally, if, if if the guy who's very tall has a very good technique, actually it's not so hard for me because I can understand what he's going to do. But when the technique is not good, I can't read his movements. I don't know what it's going to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. When the guy is very technical, I can understand what he's trying to do. It's like trying to speak someone in another to someone in another language, and he's not good at it. Yeah, it's very hard to understand what he's saying. Yeah, exactly. But mm, I don't know if there's some more types of this. Oh shit! I think only tall guys. <laughs> I think no, probably it's more than than, than this. But when I, when I think yeah, about generally, this now, generally. The, the tall guys normally give me a troubles, <laughs> and. Mm -hmm. uh, Left-handed guys. Oh, left-handed, yeah. Yeah, because normally I am the one who fights with the right hand in the front. <laughs> and when I see somebody who's standing like me, and like, okay, something is weird, because normally most people are right-handed. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And it's just, just, it's, it's, just, for me, it's not comfortable to see somebody different than normally I see. <laughs> yeah. if, it's only, if it's only boxing, I actually like fighting tall guys more. Mm. because they can't go under my punches. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's very hard. They cannot dodge my punches because I'm smaller, so they can't go underneath. It's easy. Yeah. I like it more. But if it's only boxing, I don't like fighting left-handed handed guys. Mm -hmm. But I do like fighting left-handed guys if it's kickboxing. Yeah, because, because I, can can kick them, I can kick them on the liver. <laughs> Actually, about the tall guys and this with not a good technique. I, I was one time in the competition in karate and was some kind of like a light contact karate, something like this. And I thought one guy who was maybe one and a half head taller than me. And I have to come close to him to touch him and get some score some points. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if I come close, he just do like this, like like a really small punches. He don't have to even like go like this. And the judges Stop us and say to me, you have to protect your face. I don't care <laughs> that I'm going to get one or two hits in my face. I wanna get I wanna score one point to hit him. I have to come close to him. And I could not because he was really he had a really long uh, arm. And I touch one, I come close to him, and later he just do like this with second arm and punching me. I, I don't care this kind of punches, nothing. But I, I could score some points for this and but this I lose this fight because this just all the times spit us out and say you have to protect yourself and, yeah i have to come too close to him <laughs> i cannot go like this and do like this because this is also not 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 a technique yeah. it's, it's yeah. have to be yeah you have to fight with yeah. some kind of style you know <laughs> when you're shorter you need to be able to like get stick stuck on the guy but it becomes not clean it's sloppy yeah that's what well with kickboxing you can do it because you can just throw hands like that overhand punches and hooks but if you're doing just traditional like shotokan it's very difficult because you have to fight in a line. So 
it, it becomes more complicated. Then the guy with reach has a huge advantage. Yeah. But it's, if it's something else like boxing or kickboxing, yeah, you can actually get stuck on him. And if it's dirty, it's okay. It doesn't matter. But yeah, <laughs> in it, but you're, you're, you, you were talking about like Shotokan uh, Karate where every time you score, they stop, right? Yeah, yeah. Or is, okay, yeah, that's a problem. No, 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 but, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't f- f- photo in this Shotokan. This was uh, go, Goju competition, yeah. Okay, it was continuous then. Yeah, you yeah, continue. yeah. So yeah, then you can do it because you take some and then you go inside and then you can give some. But if it stops when they touch you, then that's, that's one reason I don't like this point yeah, spar. Yeah. It's not realistic. It just... If you, someone is very long, they just put their hand out and that's it, or leg. Actually, I, I have also I did some sparring with this uh, Shotokan guy. And it was also kind of annoying for me because we did like kind of boxing rules. And mm-hmm. he, because they like to make punch and come back, like in Shotokan. Mm-hmm. Because they go forward and come back. You make like one st- strong punch and return to your position. And he, for example, do one punch and he, and he, didn't touch me and mm-hmm. he from this position just start pumping his arm like boom 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 just to get a connection with my face mm-hmm. and you know with boxing i try to you know, do some fun, nice nice movements and i go like this mm-hmm. and just getting like small punches like <laughs> <laughs> just like like he just pumping his arm like like go like forward <laughs> it's kind of annoying because you know from because he, his memory was like just touch and go back, yeah. and he could not touch it, so he tried to touch it, tried to reach me. <laughs> and Next it was time, like, get his arm down with one hand, and then punch with the other one. Do that. Yeah, next time. yeah I, I, I did this a few times, but this like uh, was just annoying because he did it quite often <laughs> because yeah. he had in his body like he had to connect it. <laughs> yeah, but but there's also this this kind of sport side of the karate that mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, what what they do. <laughs> it was just just kind of weird for me. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what else to say about Wing Chun. I, like we were original conversation, I just think it's it's not very good. It's, I wouldn't waste my time with it. But mm-hmm. I, mean, I know many people like it. But for me, it's kind of a waste of time training Wing Chun. Sorry if I offend anyone. I think it's good. It's good to try it and see. If it's if it's working for you or not, and actually it's maybe good for understanding the mechanics of movements, maybe, mm-hmm. and try to find some different ways of something. I don't. Know. <laughs> I think every style have something what you can take it. Yeah, that, that's what I usually say. That's why I asked you about what you found of useful in it, like. A lot of people hate Aikido, but I think Aikido has a lot of valuable things in it. You mm. just It's just the training system is not good, but it has a lot of useful things. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather train Hapkido, for example, that which has same things and it's more aggressive and practical. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, even if people say in Capoeira is, is not effective much as, no, but I think it's a, it's, a lot, it's a lot of, yeah, good stuff what can really surprise people and that people see this as a dance uh, but yeah Get, getting kicked in the face by a good capoeirista will like really like it'll knock you out also capoeira if you if you practice with a good teacher it has grappling it has lots of stuff my capoeira teacher taught us jiu-jitsu like some floor yeah. t- choke holes and other stuff capoeira has had, has a lot of things it's no just, people people seeing capoeira as the acrobatic and uh, spinning kicks, but Capoeira have like head bombs, have elbows, yeah, elbows have, a, yeah. have a open hands, claps, and yeah. normal punching, and knees, and all kind of kicks what you can find in different martial arts. But yeah, it has yeah. a lot of dirty like street fighting techniques also. Like I don't know how to explain, but yeah, it has a lot of dirty things also, which are very effective for. It doesn't mean that you're gonna fight in the street doing jinga. No, jinga is just the yeah, it's movement. just for the training. <laughs> I mean, you could, but no one's going to do that. I think people just imagine that a capoeira guy is going to start dancing or something. They're yeah. not, but they're going to kick you in the face, though. <laughs> I, I always say, like, when somebody said, like, why you make this jinga? It's like, yeah, you will not make a jinga in the real fight. And if you're going to do make, make jinga, 
you could, for example, make half jingle, like just a good side and make bigger hook <laughs> because you have this, this kind of move. <laughs> yeah. And this is what, what you're using for. <laughs> yeah, but also just honest, like being, being objective, it's really, if someone is doing jinga to you and he never gets tired, like he's in really good shape, it's really hard to punch him in the face or the body or it's very difficult punching a guy or hitting a guy who's doing jinga actually. Yeah. Because they're small and they're close to the ground and they can hit you everywhere, but it's not easy fighting someone. It's uncomfortable. It's much easier fighting someone who's standing up in front of you than someone who's moving around ducking. So people yeah. underestimate what capoeira can can do. Actually, once I tried to use capoeira without kicks, <laughs> uh, just with hands, like in boxing, mm. against a guy who trained boxing at this time. And he was really confused what to do <laughs> yeah against this it was for me it was a fun experience but actually accidentally i hit his throat in the fight because he wasn't expecting me that i'm going to jump from this movement <laughs> to him and mm -hmm. he did he could not read these things and i accidentally hit his throat and the fight was kind of like a over but it was a fun sparring but mm -hmm. Later, I was really sorry about about this, and I said, "Okay, never, not again." <laughs> he just uh, well, he he probably thinks Capoeira is pretty good then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know how we can uh, just make like a la last last word about Wing Chun because I was uh, this was a big part of my martial arts life, and I really enjoyed this time. But right now I moved to boxing and sometimes I try to use the Wing Chun techniques on this. Some of them works for some beginners or some medium advice, uh, medium advanced uh, guys, but against the higher level, you, I cannot do anything with Wing Chun. So oh, one of the good things about what I learned from this technique is what I can use. I have a kind of memory in my body that even if I get punched and I go step a few bucks, I just go like a yo-yo forward. Yeah. And this is the things what I get from Wing Chun that I am, even in the boxing club, they, they once, one guy said that I'm fucking yo-yo. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> just he hit my times and I go back and I, before he, he was happy that he hit me hard. And before his arm go back, I was next to him already because <laughs> this was kind that of my is, movement. That, that is a good uh, thing to do, to have in your head. It's, getting on the inside is very hard it's counterintuitive you naturally don't want to go inside but yeah. if you're able to do it then that's great yeah because in which you have a kind of rule like you should not never you should never go back you should stay in one position or go forward yeah. <laughs> this was kind of rude. generally yeah just go forward or to the sides you want to avoid of course it's useful to go back sometimes but in general going back is not as good as going to the sides or cutting him off front yeah. like going inside now, normally you go back example in Wing Chun, you mm -hmm. is allowed to do example two steps back just to stop your opponent because when he starts make his combo normally when you still going backwards you're giving more opportunity to he for him to continue this combo but if you just stop him one two and you go and break his timing this was this also the kind of things that you have to break the timing of the your opponent but yeah it has a lot of, of theoretical things that yeah but it's it difficult to right. to do this yeah. in the real situation <laughs> it's it's too complicated the way they want to apply it like, yeah yeah okay i agree break the timing and everything but just i don't know block punch it doesn't need to be complicated yeah, yeah. which you would learn in boxing or kickboxing like uh, Anyway, it's good that you teach me something about Wing Chun because I only know what I see on yeah. <laughs> the video. I think it's most what people see about Wing Chun. And mm -hmm. most of them who train Wing Chun, this is the uh, Ip Man movie believers. <laughs> I, I only saw the first Ip Man movie, which I liked. It was entertaining. But when he's fighting like 50 karate guys and he beats everyone up, that's bullshit. That's yeah. because that's not, that doesn't happen. And then I saw like clips of the other movies where he fights Mike Tyson and a bunch of that's also bullshit. That that fight would last one second, one punch for Mike Tyson and finished. Yeah. Actually, I like only two these two uh, Eatman movies with Don Ian. This first one, and mm -hmm. second one, the first one with Mike Tyson was 
I just watched just because, <laughs> not because I wanted it, because after this player, when I saw my advertisement, I was like, okay, it's going to be weird. <laughs> and now it's Ip Man Ford, it's like, okay, it's going to be even more weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so too much, ho- too much Hollywood yeah. stuff now. <laughs> On Ip Man 5, he fights the Predator, you know, <laughs> like against aliens and the so Terminator. He- so it's become like a Brazil, Brazilian TV series, like going to be episode number one million seventy eight. <laughs> <laughs> but they they have no more opponents, so they need to bring in like crossover with Toy Story fighting. Yeah. The <laughs> All sorts of weird shit, like the Ninja Turtles. Uh, they will not know what to do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they have to keep going to collect more believers in this religion. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. this is it, the way we'll get. It will get impulse and then at some point it will stop again, like it happened with Aikido and other things. 